Here we are. Good to go. Perfect. I just heard the echo. Are we we good with the echo now? Sure. I don't care anymore. Nope. Give me one. Perfect. Moment. I just heard the echo. Are we <laughs> we good with the echo now? Sure. I hear it. One second. I just heard the echo. Are we we good with the echo now? I hear it. <laughs> bear with us everybody yes bear with us technical issues here bear with us everybody yes bear with us technical issues here there we go that should take care of it all right we are good We're sorry good for that. that always learning something new <laughs> oh that's so great Welcome everybody to our Thoughts for Thursday Facebook Live. We wanted to start doing Thursdays now, so we got Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, of course, with the holidays coming up in Canada and in the U.S. of A, um, there'll be a couple, you know, change of dates, and um, but we'll let you all know that. So today we are talking about what is white coat syndrome. Why aren't we getting better when um, we go through the conventional medical system, and um, what what to do about it? What research? What um, avenues and resources you can you can have to get better? So. Um, I am Casey Kephart. I am the founder of Nutrition with Casey. I, my program is for women with all different types of autoimmune diseases. And my business name is Nutrition with Casey. My Facebook group for um, all of you lovely autoimmune ladies is Nutrition for Women with Autoimmune Disease. And um, I am here with Jessica, as you know, because you're a part of her group. Uh, so Jessica, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes. So thank you, Casey. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessica Melnick. I am a registered holistic nutritionist, the founder of the Anti-Arthritis Method, and the host of the Happy Joints Arthritis Solutions Group. So as many of you know, I specialize in working with people who have autoimmune forms of arthritis uh, through the group and through my program, the anti-arthritis method. I am located in Saskatchewan, Canada, but I practice online and uh, work with most of my uh, people from Canada, US and Australia. So Casey and I are happy to be with you here today to share some information that often, uh, and some, some of the struggles that often come up when we are trying to heal from autoimmune forms of arthritis and other autoimmune conditions. So yep. Casey, I'll let you take it away. Yeah. So let's first talk about what is white coat syndrome. I'm sure some of you have heard about it and maybe not. It does sound pretty scary, but it's not. It's just basically that we put our, we put our doctors on a pedestal. So uh, we believe whatever they have to say, they believe, we believe what they say is right, is true, and will work for our bodies. Um, just because you have a white coat on, whether that's a doctor or any other practitioner does not mean that they know your body better than you do. Um, so let's put that in, into perspective just a little bit. Why am I saying that they don't know best? They went to for eight years of medical school. They get paid a lot of money. They run their own practice. They're able to diagnose and prescribe and everything. So why don't they know more about your body than, than you do? Well, I probably needless to say, but you live in your body every single day. They don't know everything that's going on. They don't know how you feel personally. Um, and of course, because Jessica and I are on the nutrition side of things and we can't prescribe pills to you and we can't diagnose, but we, we treat the body through nutrition. We're, we're coming at an angle here and saying that doctors don't have that angle. Doctors can tell you what diet that you should be on. They can tell you what to eat, but that doesn't mean that they went through eight years of school to figure out what you should eat and what's going to work. Um, Jessica and I have had immense more training than do most doctors in nutrition than they have. So, um, Doctors who tell you what to eat, what diet, let's say the Mediterranean or plant-based or low fat, 
um, they're coming from that perspective as that's the old school way. That's what we've, we've, they've been told to do in medical school, but also that's what they've been told to do in their four classes of nutrition <laughs> Four. So that hasn't changed much at all. And, um, it's a very old school style of thinking. So, um, Jessica, why don't you talk a little bit more about your story with that? I know we talked about that yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. So like Casey was saying, um, most doctors have little of any nutrition training in their eight years of medical school. So they are very well versed in a lot of things. Nutrition, unfortunately, though, is not one of them. So um, they may flippantly uh, recommend, like you said, like a low fat diet, Mediterranean diet, plant based diet that type of thing for some of their patients, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that works for autoimmune conditions. Uh, oftentimes our doctors will tell us it doesn't matter what we eat when it comes to having an autoimmune condition. And uh, that can be really frustrating too. So I know for myself, my doctor at the time when I was having arthritic flare-ups and beginning my condition, uh, he didn't recommend any type of, of nutrition or diet. Um, I asked him if he recommended something because I was already eating what uh, generally in like we most people would say is a really, really healthy diet. And uh, so I couldn't figure out, well, why the heck wasn't it working for me? And so he basically was like, yeah, well, you can try, you know, changing your diet a little bit, but I don't think it's going to make much difference. So at that time um, that I was experiencing flare ups in my arthritis was I was eating a mainly vegan diet, which for a lot of people, like a whole foods plant based diet can be really, really healthy. But especially like, let's say for like, maybe if you have a heart condition or something like that, and you're trying to eat things that are like lower in cholesterol or saturated fat, you know, traditionally, that's something that a lot of uh, doctors might recommend as something that's helpful. But for someone with an autoimmune condition, which I later found out, it was actually making me a lot sicker. I was eating a lot of foods that was actually contributing to my symptoms and uh, contributing to my leaky gut and making my condition worse, making my flare-ups more frequent and uh, at the time though I had no idea because I thought well, I'm eating a super super healthy diet so that's kind of my experience uh, with uh, nutrition and my condition yeah um it, it's it's not funny but for lack of a word, better word it's funny when they say well it can help or maybe it won't help when there's thousands and hopefully millions of people who have seen difference in, in the way that they're eating by cutting out certain things. Um, so with, with a doctor that says, you know, nutrition doesn't really help or, you know, let's just take labs and see, um, that isn't always going to fix you either. So we'll talk a little bit about the lab work and kind of the skewed system we have here, Jessica. Yeah, so unfortunately, the labs and the tests that our doctors give us when it comes to autoimmunity uh, often don't tell us a lot. So uh, there are certain standard tests that doctors can give us and uh, give us the results for. But the thing is, is that these tests and what's considered a normal result is based on a huge sample of the, like our population. And unfortunately, when you live in North America, at least 50% of the people in Canada and the US are not considered healthy or metabolically healthy, but they're considered in the normal range of what we would consider average. So our lab results are actually based on that and that's how our doctors interpret them. So we might fall at you know, the high end or the low end of what is considered normal, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's optimal or healthy. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that, Casey? Yeah. And so even if you were in that optimal range, let's say, you know, I'm sure we've all seen lab work before we have this range in, in the green. Um, let's say you're right smack dab in the middle of the green. That still does not mean that your body likes being there. Um, everybody has a different um um, level that they like to be at for, we call it homeostasis in our body. And it's different for every single person. So just because your labs say, 
you're in the optimal range doesn't mean that you're healthy. Um, especially if you're going to the doctor for some reason and they tell you you're fine and you don't feel fine that <laughs> believe that trust your gut and, and keep looking for answers. And we'll get into a little bit on what to ask for and where to go if you wanted to go somewhere else. But, um, there's a lot of doctors that say, um, if our lab range isn't, if our lab is optimal and we still are feeling bad, they might say it's all in our head. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard that before. It's, it's all in your head. You're, you're getting scared or worked up over nothing. Um, you hear that, you run. <laughs> Just run. Just walk out, pay your bill, and, mm -hmm. and go find a different doctor because um, there's always more tests to be done. Always. Yes. And I think Casey, I know you're going to talk a little bit about this as well, but a good example of that is thyroid testing. So mm -hmm. often if we're having issues and with, let's say we're like tired all the time, or we're losing our hair or we're gaining weight, even though, you know, we're, we've been dieting for months or years, even for some people, and you're just like, you have symptoms of a low thyroid. Often the tests that our doctors will give us are very, very minimal. They don't actually test the full functioning of our thyroid. So even though something is wrong, our test results will come back normal. And so, um, especially if you're somebody who suffers from low functioning thyroid or the autoimmune condition, Hashimoto's, which is low thyroid, that's an autoimmune condition, you need better testing to give the full picture. And unfortunately in our conventional medicine, it's just typically, it's, it's just a very uh, rudimentary test that's given out and it's very rare that it actually comes back abnormal, but I'll be quiet and I'll let you move on Casey. Cause I know we have a lot more to talk about and you'll elaborate on that a little bit more when it's yeah, no, more about testing. Definitely. Um, no, I like that you said that already because there is always more than we're, what we're seeing or more than what they're doing. Um, so the next thing that we we're going to go through was the root cause of things. And oftentimes in conventional medicine, we give us, we have a symptom. We go in for the symptom. The symptom ma matches the diagnosis. The diagnosis then will give us the pill on what pill to take. And then we go on our merry way. But why, why are we taking a pill for, um, it? So a better way to say it is the pill is only going to only going to be a band-aid for us. It's not really getting into the root cause of why we need to take the pill in the first place. So we don't have a deficiency in Lexapro, which is an antidepressant. We have a deficiency in sunlight and vitamin D and community and friends and laughter and, you know, maybe some other things and food and serotonin, like the list can go on. It's not a deficiency in Lexapro. So oftentimes in conventional medicine, medicine, we don't, they don't try to figure out what is actually going on with you and what do we need to do? So we don't need to take that pill. And oftentimes more times than not, and Jessica will agree, it's a leaky gut. You have a leaky gut and we need to fix it. And your body is going haywire because of it. And it's causing all of these symptoms in different ways and different people. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jessica? Anything to add? Yeah, absolutely. And the catch 22 of the whole thing is that, and don't get me wrong, I do believe that there is a time and place for medication. Um, sometimes if we're in like an acute flare up, we might need something to like calm mm -hmm. it down. But the thing is with long-term use of medication, is it actually contributing to the problem? So it's actually inflaming the gut. It's making the problem worse. And I know it can be, it sounds really strange. And I know for myself, it took me a while to wrap my head around this. Like, what do you mean? My joint pain is coming from my gut. Like that doesn't make any sense. Um, and I know you and I have talked about this in more detail. We're not going to get into that today. Um, that's another, another day. And <laughs> Um, but it's actually the medication is actually making the problem worse in the long run. And so it's mm -hmm. not just inflaming our gut and, and uh, making it more of a breeding ground for more autoimmune flare ups. It is, um, it, there's other symptoms, there's other uh, side effects, uh, rather that we can be having from these medications, depending on what we are taking, because there's so many different types of medications that we can be on if we have an autoimmune condition. 
But what it comes down to is that it's going to make it worse in the long run, and it's not going to help us to be on those medications indefinitely forever. Yeah, exactly. Um, and oftentimes going back to like the, the symptom leads to the diagnosis, the diagnosis leads to the pill. There can be so many symptoms that fit so many different diagnoses, diagnoses. So I'm sure some of you have gone into the doctor's office with a, a laundry list of symptoms and you come out with a laundry list of diseases that you have or problems that you have. Let's say fibromyalgia, you have then candida, your celiac, and you have Hashimoto's, um, all of those things go together, actually. All of them can be fixed through nutrition and through healing the gut. So yeah, you could have this laundry list of issues, let's just call it, but it could be fixed with this one component one that reaches many other components, but nutrition, and get rid of all of that without taking seven different pills. Does that make sense? I feel like I said that in a weird way, but. No, absolutely. There's so much that food can actually do. And I think we don't actually realize how powerful it can be until we've seen how it works either way. So like in my case, how food was really working against me and I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then having to learn you know, what type of food and how I need to feed myself for an autoimmune condition and like what a huge difference that makes. Yeah, exactly. So I'm really glad that you didn't listen to your doctor and you really want the food <laughs> route and um, you listen to your gut more than, more than anything because our doctors are good, like you said, for the acute and for the immediate emergency response. Um, but anything long-term, the regular conventional medicine system has failed us time and time again. Um, so I guess going back to what tests that you need to maybe ask for, or you, you should ask for, and there's, there's a laundry list of that too, but just a couple important ones would be a full panel thyroid test. Cause more than likely with any autoimmune disease, any, a lot of symptoms go along with thyroid. You'll want to ask for a full thyroid panel. They, they should know what that is. Um, and then an ANA test, which is just a marker to see if you do have an autoimmune disease. Um, cause that can be really telling for the doctor as well. Um, basically telling for him on what pill you should be on, but telling for you for your research in the later years and months and days and things like that. Um, a stool test may even, depending on what's going on, a stool test may be really eye-opening to you and to um, your doctor as well. And that reminds me, any tests that you get, just know that you do have access to all of that to bring it home, print it, they have to print it out and they do legally have to give it to you. So take your lab tests and do your own research and go get a second opinion if you're not really feeling comfortable with what was said, or you don't feel like it's going to work or it's not working. Um, you have full power over your health uh, and all of your labs and every paperwork that he writes down, he or she. That's great to know. Because I, I know I talk to people all the time and they, they don't know what kind of arthritis they have. Mm. You know? And I think it's really important just to know for yourself what is happening with your body and, you know, being able to determine if in fact it is an autoimmune origin, you know, just knowing, you know, if it is this autoimmune or is it not, because that also determines how you can address it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Um, so why are we talking about this? Like we, we both have autoimmune protocols. We both try to fix the gut and we both try to heal autoimmune disease and put it in remission. So why does it matter if we're talking about doctors, right? Um, we want you because oftentimes we're all set up and we have a support network of people. And oftentimes those do include doctors, but we all want to be on the same page and we want um, all the same information to what's the right word. We want all the information to be aligned, I guess. Um, so Jessica, do you have anything else to say about, about that? Well, yeah, I think, um, like just like, I think we've covered a lot of the main reasons of why we're talking about this in the first place. And that is it's to, you know, don't disqualify what your gut is telling you. If you mm -hmm. know something is wrong with your body, you are right. 
unless you like, of course, that in the side note, if you're like a severe hypochondriac and you're like, you think if something's wrong all the time, maybe not the case, but for most, most people, if yeah. you think something's wrong with you, something is wrong with you. And sometimes just because the doctor can't find it or figure it out, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And I okay. think part of the other, the reason we want, we're talking about this is because there, we want you to know that there are other options that are a lot less invasive that can deal with autoimmune conditions and that will work and that will, that will help. So, yeah. um, yeah, pills aren't, aren't the cure pills are a bandaid to a symptom and they don't actually deal with actually the root of the problem. And so I think that is really, really key for why we are talking about this. Yeah, definitely. Um, there are practitioners out there that do work with the root cause of the problem. Um, Jessica and I are one of them, but um, there are chiropractors, acupuncturists, um, right, uh, doctors, um, really just anybody can be a holistic and functional medicine practitioner who does treat the root cause, who does not just give pills to you or align a symptom with a diagnosis. So if you want to go that route and you really do believe that there is a root cause to what you're feeling, that food is, um, you know, an answer to healing, um, go to, so I'll just give you the website right here. Cause I don't think I can type it in and people will see it, but, um, it's ifm.org, um, slash that's the slash, right. <laughs> um, find hyphen a hyphen practitioner and that will take you to the ifm um, search to search anybody in your um, your province if you're in canada um, your state if you're in um, the us and zip code i mean really everybody who could be near you you'll find that there um, and they're not all doctors. They could be nutritionists, dietitians, chiropractors, pharmacists, um, really anything. So that I think that would be a really good first step. Um, they'll be able to do labs for you because Jessica and I both don't do labs um, and kind of get you started on the right foot here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I know we've mentioned this before, but Casey and I are both examples of you know, putting autoimmune conditions into remission for ourselves in a natural way uh, with a basis in nutrition. So dealing with the root of the problem and using, you know, food, supplements, a lifestyle, um, mindset, all those things that we both include in our programs and the things that worked for us and the things that work for our clients and another really great thing is that our programs often eliminate the need to get any of these tests done because we are able to help you get your body back into balance by decreasing the inflammation that's in your body that's making you feel like garbage because we're working with the actual root of the autoimmune condition with diet, lifestyle, you know, stress management, our environment, et cetera. So a very broad, holistic view on things. And we support and guide you and provide you all the resources you need to get the best help for you so that you can feel so much better. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And there's times where um, I'll do like an hour intake with somebody and just get their background, their family history, their lifestyle, their stress, literally everything. And I can pinpoint like, okay, you got low adrenals here. Your cortisol is messed up. You're, you may have some insulin problems. You definitely have a leaky gut. Your stools may be having some bacteria in it. And it's just things that you say that are triggers to what could be going on in your body. And sometimes we don't even need a test for that because it always, it, it will get um, resolved when you do heal your gut and when you are on a proper protocol and um, actually fixing, fixing your stress and your lifestyle and things like that. So it's amazing how things happen when you have support, but you also have a good um, clean eating regimen as well. Clean eating for autoimmune disease. <laughs> Yes, I should add. It's not just clean eating. <laughs> yes, right. there's, there's many ways to eat clean, but it's specifically for autoimmune conditions. Which, exactly. Yeah, which is something we definitely can show you. Definitely. 
Um, so just to wrap it up, you're not crazy if you feel like something is wrong when you go to the doctors and they tell you nothing is wrong. Um, you're not crazy if you are second guessing everything. Trust your gut. Ask a lot of questions to your doctor. Ask a lot of questions to somebody else. Get multiple opinions. Um, you know your body best more than anybody else does. And it's a journey. But Jessica and I are here to slash that journey time in half and hopefully 90% of it. So ask us questions. And we've gone through it through experience. We have the education backed behind us. So um, you will definitely get to your healing journey as well. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good way to put that, Casey. And like we always say, we'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any questions that you'd like us to cover on Tuesdays or Thursdays, let us know, type it into the replay. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, we'll get your comments and we'd love your feedback. So ask us questions too. Yep. So we'll be back next Tuesday. I think Thursday we're taking next week off on Thursday. Yes. Um, we have Remembrance Day and Veterans Day, um, but we are doing uh, Wednesday morning instead. So you get us two days in a row. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's a good place to stop. So everybody have a good weekend and we will see you all next week. Thanks, Jessica. Sounds great. You guys have a good day. Bye. Bye.